Over the last couple of years, the entire world has had to adjust to life with COVID-19. And while we've all gone and lived through lockdowns, travel restrictions, and quarantines, it turns out that restrictions in China stay the strictest in the world. The country holds a zero COVID policy with no plans to change anytime soon. So in today's video, we're talking about how these restrictions have affected China's tennis. Let's get started. First up, COVID restrictions see China's tennis dumped. Earlier this year, China hosted the Winter Olympics under strict health protocols, but most of the other international sporting events in the country have been postponed or canceled. As the Chinese authorities have strong zero COVID policies, this has led to many sporting bodies pulling out of the country for the third consecutive year, including the ATP, the men's tennis governing body. The ATP recently announced that the events held in China, usually in September and October, would be canceled again this year, same as the last two years. These events include Shanghai Masters, Chengdu Open, Zhuhai Championships, and China Open. It was announced that six ATP 250 tournaments will fill the gap in the calendar year. Andrea Gaudenzi, the ATP chairman, said that event cancellations were an unfortunate reality, but it was encouraging to see so many great cities step up to host ATP Tour Tennis this season. There's no confirmation on where these events will be held as of yet. Now, when was the last Last time China held ATP events. It was a time before COVID. Hard to imagine that now, isn't it? The world looked different. Donald Trump was still allowed to use Twitter, Elon Musk wasn't the richest man in the world, and Tom Holland was our only Spider-Man. It was 2019. China was still holding tennis tournaments. Daniil Medvedev, the current world number one, won the Shanghai Open. Pablo Carena Busta won the Chengdu Open. Alex de Menar had a brilliant run at Zhuhai Championships where he left his champion, and Dominic Thiem had won the China Open. Dominic Thiem winning ATP tournaments. Now isn't that something we all terribly miss? But then, the world as we knew it changed. Since 2019, China has not hosted any ATP events. So what is China's zero COVID policy? As of right now, only China, Macau, and North Korea are pursuing the zero COVID policy. China still has strict restrictions across the country. Earlier this year, China saw its worst COVID outbreak break in Shanghai, which resulted in the entire city going into lockdown. Residents were only allowed to leave the house once every few days. The Chinese government has also made use of mass testing to stop outbreaks. For instance, over a year ago, almost the entire population in the city of Gangzhou, which was around 18 million residents, were tested in just three days during a Delta variant outbreak. As you can probably guess, traveling to China right now isn't the easiest either. There are various control measures measures across the country. This includes restricted movements, reduced transportation, entry and exit controls, and isolation requirements for different cities. If travelers test positive for COVID, they're kept in an isolated hospital for care until the test results come back as negative. This can take up to weeks. Even those who test negative need to quarantine for at least 10 days in some provinces. Of course, anybody who's not double vaccinated isn't allowed to enter the country at all. All in all, it's Lots of testing in isolation, and the ATP stated that most players wouldn't travel to China if they had to quarantine, and so, no events in China this year either. Meanwhile, the WTA has its own boycott of China. The WTA, the women's tennis governing body, also has no events scheduled in 2022 in China, but unlike the ATP, their reasons are a bit different. In November 2021, Pang Shui, a former doubles number one in WTA rankings, posted on Instagram that China's former vice premier, Zhang Guali, sexually assaulted her. Her message was heard and taken seriously by the WTA and the tennis world, as well as women across the globe. It was a serious issue, one that millions of women go through every single day. Everybody expected that serious action would be taken against the said official. Instead, Peng disappeared from the public eye and her post was taken down. In regards to her allegation, there was heavy censoring all across China. Her post was removed from all social media pages, and no internet discussion was allowed. She disappeared for weeks as the entire world came together to seek answers about this. Months later, in February, she appeared in a newspaper interview that was held under highly controlled circumstances and took back her statement, saying it had been a misunderstanding. The WTA called for action from the Chinese government that proved that Peng was free and able to talk about her assault, but there was no full, fair, 
or transparent action taken by the leadership in the country. As a result, the WTA banned all events in China and Hong Kong as Steve Simon said that this kind of behavior was not acceptable, and no players would be asked to play in a country where Peng Shui wasn't free or in a place where such serious allegations weren't addressed. It seems unlikely that the WTA would allow events in China and Hong Kong at least for the foreseeable future, and they continue to seek answers about her disappearance and allegations. Now, let's move on to some other related news. First up, Novak Djokovic joins Team Europe. If you weren't already beyond excited for the Labor Cup, this will get your heart racing. Novak Djokovic is all set to join Roger Federer, Rafael Nadal, and Andy Murray in Team Europe. That's right, sounds like all your dreams are coming true, doesn't it? It was announced earlier this week that the Serb will be traveling to London with the team. The 21-time Grand Slam champion talked about the tournament and said it was the only event where he got to play with the guys he was normally competing with. He said he was thrilled to be joining Rafa, Roger, and Andy, three of his biggest rivals, and it was going to be a truly unique moment in the history of tennis. Honestly, we can hardly wait. Bjorn Borg, who captains Team Europe, said that he couldn't have imagined having these four icons playing together in one team, and he liked the team's chances to win them. He also said he appreciated the significance of this moment. And so do we, Bjorn. 23rd of September can't come soon enough. This is going to be the best thing ever. Moving on, thousands signed petition to allow Novak Djokovic to play at the US Open. As of right now, unvaccinated travelers are not allowed to enter the United States. Of course, this means that Novak Djokovic will have to miss the final slam of the tournament. Now, the Serb has been very vocal about his stance against the vaccine, and he's repeatedly said he won't change his mind about getting it. The 35-year-old was also deported from Australia earlier this year because of this reason, and he wasn't allowed to defend his title at the Australian Open. But now, an online petition has emerged asking to allow Noel to play in the Flushing Meadows. It says that if unvaccinated, Americans are allowed to compete. The Serb should too. It's got more than 12,000 signatures right now, and that number is likely to rise. On the other hand, Novak has said that he doesn't want to fight anybody over this, and if the rules don't officially change, he would just have to miss the tournament. Earlier this year, he missed Indian Wells and Miami Open in the US because of travel restrictions. We'll have to wait and see what happens, but it seems likely that the next time we see the Serb at a Grand Slam will be the 2023 French Open, as the restrictions in Australia still stand as well. And finally, Dominic Thiem is into the final four at the Swiss Open. After what's been two very long years, Dominic Thiem is into another ATP Tour semi-final. The Australian beat Juan Pablo Varillas in straight sets to reach the final four. He said that he was feeling the pressure of making it to his first semi-final, and admitted that his nerves almost got the best of him at one point in his quarterfinal game. After the match, Domi said he was happy he was able to break the nerves and was satisfied with his progress. He said that he was feeling the pressure of making it to his first semi-final, and admitted that his nerves almost got the best of him at one point in the quarterfinal game. After the match, Domi said that he was happy he was able to break the nerves and was satisfied with his progress. He stated that he didn't come into the tournament expecting to make it to the semis, so it was really, really good, and he would try to do his best in the next game. The former US Open champion is set to play Matteo Berrettini in the semis. We wish him the best of luck. We need him back to his best as soon as possible. Fingers crossed. That's a wrap for this video. Do you think it's time China eases up on its COVID restrictions? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.